All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Film School for Marketers podcast. I'm literally standing up today because I'm so stoked about who we're talking about. Um, we're here with Shayna from Repurpose House. She's a founder of a service that we've been using at Impact now for a couple of years. And FSM has just started to actually squeeze some value out of the service as well. Uh, Shayna, thank you so much for joining us. I'm really, really stoked to have you and talk more about just how to get the most out of each piece of video that you make uh, with the sales and marketing they ask you answer strategy. Yeah, no problem. I'm excited to be here and talk about it. So Shana, give the people that don't know what Repurpose House is just the quick, like the quick and dirty update. How did you start it? Where did you come from? And then tell us what the value proposition is of your, your now really, really quickly growing organization. Yeah, you got it. So my background is in video production for digital marketing. So I was creating really um, strategic video strategies for businesses. I got to work with some awesome companies. And my whole my whole goal with that was not like, we would have clients come in and be like, we need some epic five minute video about how awesome we are. And I'd be like, no, you don't because nobody cares yet. So let's talk about <laughs> what kind of content we can create to get them to care. Then we can talk about, obviously everybody needs their like about me video that's, you know, produced and looks clean and all that stuff. But you got to get people to care about watching that video in the first place. And that's where like educational content comes from. Anything that you can, you know, speak to your audience about that they can apply to their life or their business that makes it better will get them to be interested in who you are when they are looking for those services. Right. So, um, the video production company was all about that type of stuff. Like how can we create a ton of really educational, impactful content, um, that then brings people back into your sphere whenever it's time to make purchases. So in doing that, I started to do video podcasts for clients. Cause I was like, okay, um, it's a long form piece of content. We can bust it up into a million pieces, right? It's educational. Also, we can put it into like podcast form and like podcast listeners are crazy sticky. The fact that somebody's going to like listen to a piece of content for over 15 minutes is crazy to me. Like that's unheard of in video world, right? When like a five second view is exciting in general. So I was like, this has so many impacts. Like let's do video podcasts. And so I started to pitch the whole video, like the highly produced kind of video podcast name to a bunch of like pretty pronounced just audio podcasters. And as I was explaining to them what is included in it, so like I got the same response over and over and over again. And it was, we don't care about the video part, but if you just gave us those little assets for social media that we could post of our existing podcast, we'll like throw our money at you. And I was like, there's nobody doing that yet. And I did some research, found out that there were services that you could do it yourself, or there were like bigger agencies that were including it as a part of like a massive package. But there really wasn't just a very, very specific done for you, you know, solution to repurposing con content. So initially we were only repurposing podcast episodes. It was called podcast memes. Um, found out that podcasters really weren't the demographic. It was it was marketers who were using podcasting as an arm of their marketing strategy. So I was like, well, I know marketers, so let's repurpose everything. So now um, we will take any type of content you can literally imagine. So video, text, which is kind of cool. We do like text motion videos. We turn them into cool like assets for social audio. We do audiograms. We basically take any type of content you can think of and we repackage it into you know, full-fledged packages for all of the different social media platforms. So like this episode, for instance, we will probably repurpose it. I'm assuming so. We're going to take up like probably a bunch of two-minute clips and we're going to do, you know, a square video meme with captions and branding for all of the social media feeds. We're going to do a vertical one for stories and IGTV, a landscape one for YouTube. You'll get some image quotes out of it in all the sizes and thumbnails to support it. And that's basically... What we do is we take content that you've already spent time, energy, and sometimes money creating and then give you tons of leverage out of it to be able to now post it on platforms where it probably wasn't going to do the best in its original form. No, oh, totally. And I, was, I just had that meta realization moment that like that will probably be its own soundbite on a repurposed house asset in like a couple of days from now. So. <laughs> right. It's weird. It's, it's like a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> It's a little bit like in the weeds of it, but no, it's it's pretty cool at the same time. So Repurpose House essentially is a, is a subscription service that allows you to send long form videos to an organization that's going to do all of the stuff that you could do yourself, but really is like the first thing to fall off of my personal plate when I'm making video content. Like the last thing I'm going to do is go make a video meme to go put on Facebook or on LinkedIn. If, if something's going to fall off my plate, it's going to be that. I have to instead upload just a link to this YouTube video. I have to take like 10, 15 minutes to create like a ticket for this video and tell them the bit that I actually want to have captured. 
And then in a business day, they turn it around for me to actually like push out to my social. And then what I feel like is all of this untapped exposure of my content that I, I wouldn't have gotten without actually just having some third party do this because I'm not going to do it myself 100% of the time or probably even like half the time, if I'm being honest. And, and I think this is a really big sort of aha moment when I'm explaining Repurpose House to a lot of my consulting clients is, is the realization that it's not just about making this stuff, but it's about making the most out of this stuff as well. Like people don't get the juice that they need from each video. They're worried way more about the consistency of it and like doing the next thing and always moving on to whatever's next in the pipeline of content to go create without sometimes looking backward and say, are we getting as much out of each piece that we really could? And, and it's an awesome aha moment for, for people that are starting to do they ask you answer when they realize like, there's a little more value we could squeeze out of each piece of content and ways to make the most of things that maybe you wouldn't have done even just a, like months before, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, the ones that do the best with it is where they have like a piece of content that there's an awesome call to action. Like they have either like a lead gen form or like something that leads them to a funnel is like, those are the ones that sometimes will get overlooked. Like, oh, it's an older piece of content. And it's like, if it does well, if you're generating leads and, you know, building a list and getting clients out of it, constantly, constantly send them there. So you're totally right where people chase the next new thing. And it's like, you probably are sitting on a gold mine worth of things that could actually bring more, you know, traffic leads business, really. Another thing that I talk to my, my clients about a lot is that, there's people that want the same amount of information or the same type of information just packaged in a different way. Like there are some people that are ready for this 10 minute long form video because maybe they're further down the buying process and they're ready to like dive into the weeds on all this stuff. And then there's those people that are like, they want the 45 second sound bite of it because maybe they're a week away from wanting that, that more in the weeds video, but they never would have found or even known about that 10 minute long form bit if they didn't get something that was a bit more of like a foot in the door piece of concept for it. I'm curious, like when, when a business is doing this on their own and there's, they're sort of like spending their videographer's time or like, I mean, a lot of our clients that watch this podcast, I think they've, they've seen what we're talking about, like literal video memes where the, the um, Mar Marcus Sheridan does them all the time on his own. Like when do you think it becomes valuable to look into a service like yours to actually outsource some of this stuff? You know, ultimately you have to look at it this way. Do you really want to spend somebody's time on your team? Who's probably specialized in something that is way more exciting than going through captions and making sure things are spelled right for hours at a time, especially a videographer, because videographers come at a pretty decent price tag and they want to do creative work and things that are actually going to be strategic for you instead of wasting time, formatting, resizing, captioning. So really what it comes down to is if you have people who are able to then manage taking these assets and just doing amazing things with them, don't, don't waste your time and your team's time, you know, having them do redundant work that is really not in their wheelhouse. And truthfully, it's not what they want to do anyway. Like they're, they're probably going to be way more excited and way more effective at literally anything else that's within like the scope of what their job description truly should be. Right. So ultimately you, at any time you can outsource us like a solution like us, because we try to make it as easy for any size team or like content well, if you will, to be able to utilize us. Like we have packages that start really, really low where it's like, okay, you just get the three different size videos once a week. Like if you repurpose one piece of content one time a week and you're good to go. But then we go all the way up to like you're saying once every business day, we have people who have triple subscriptions and get three assets like repurpose every business day. We even go so far as to go through your content for you and curate it and submit tickets for you if your team just doesn't want to do any of it. So it's like, there's really no the right time is now. If you're working with content and you want to be strategic with it, you, if you already made it, get the most mileage out of it. There's no reason not to. Yeah. I've had a lot of customers that I've brought this up to and they, they say that they need to show like the value of it before they're going to be getting like the budget to, to have a subscription service like this. So I tell them to just try and do this yourself once or twice, like make some scrappier version of it that you're going to publish to your own social media and show how you can take a piece of content that you've taken the time and effort money to, to actually create and drive more traffic to it with repurposed versions of the same information. And I'm curious from your perspective, they're like what you guys have seen so far, what is like the best, like what's the best content to do this with? If you're, if you're trying to be picky about what you want to sort of, 
test the waters with when you're making repurposed content? It's a great question. So if you're trying to prove the point, you need to be able to show some result, right? You can't deposit likes. So you may as well come up with some metric that actually matters to the people who are going to write the check for the service, right? So we have one client and it's also helpful if you can track everything. So uh, we have a client who uses HubSpot and you guys are big HubSpot, you know, fanatics. So we tracked just repurposing one piece of content for them one time a week. So it was a video podcast similar to this. They're in the event industry. Um, they talk to industry experts in their field and it's a gated piece of content. So anytime somebody wants to watch the long form piece of content, they have to basically pay with their information. So their email address, their name, their business name, things like that. Um, and they just took one piece of one little two minute clip out of that one hour long episode every single week. And they were just posting it strategically. That's the other thing. Like, okay. Like Mondays was Facebook feed, the square video meme, like Tuesdays was LinkedIn feeds, the square video meme. And they did stories on Wednesday on, you know, Instagram, then stories on Thursday on Facebook. And then they went into their LinkedIn groups and posted there. Like it wasn't just posted one time on one platform and then ta-da, like it all of a sudden generates all of this crazy engagement and traffic. You have to be very, very strategic in what you're doing with that. But the cool thing is you can take the one little clip and string it out over all of these platforms. Like you were saying, sometimes people are in different mindsets. So like if I'm on Facebook Monday and then I'm on LinkedIn on Thursday, LinkedIn's more business minded for me and for most people, right? If I'm on Instagram, I don't even follow anybody from work because I don't care, right? It's like, I'm in, I'm in like tune out zone kind of. So it's just having the messaging differently on each of them as well will really help. So if you can spread it out over the course of a week on multiple platforms, have something that is they're being driven back to that you can prove that there has been an engagement spike or you know an, like their opt-ins in 90 days increased by 300% just from social media. And that was just from one, two minute clip a week that they repurposed. And we actually, we have the case study on the site. Like we, it's a downloadable thing and it goes through exactly what their strategy was. So if you want to take that for free and apply it for a month or whatever, and you can start seeing if you see engagement by like the DIY version, so you can prove it, you guys are welcome to do that. But, um, it was really cool to see it proven. If you want to prove it, you just have to be able to show metrics that people care about, not vanity metrics and likes and stuff like that. Cause ultimately like that's great. It's brand awareness, but we all are trying to generate some sort of ROI on our efforts. Right. And if you can't show that, then that's probably, you know, not the best way to test it. Totally. And I think that's a great actual resource to have people that know there would be value in this in their own organizations to have that sort of wielded as a little bit of a backup. So we'll definitely put that case study in the show notes. I think you touched on a cool point too, that for every business, there's probably a different social media or a specific social media sort of grouping that's going to make more sense to connect with their customers on. And so maybe step one of deciding how or when to repurpose your own content is to decide which channels you actually have qualified prospects that are searching and they're in the right mindset for whatever it is that you want to educate them about or, or show them passively. And I'm curious, it has now that you've repurposed so much content, has it changed your pre-production process at all? Are there any like lines that you make sure to say in the intro or like, do you know what the, the little soundbite is going to be before the, the play button ever gets hit on the video? Yeah. So like in other people's content or in our own, because with others, we're at the mercy, right? But for when we're producing content, we usually now will, unless it's a, a interview style like this, we always try to create the long form in numbers. So like the top seven things that X, Y, or Z, right? Um, seven's the best number statistically. Like if you use the number seven in your content, you're automatically going to get a bump in engagement, but numbers, odd numbers specifically, if, and if you have an even number, it's like three plus ways to X, Y, Z, because for some reason odds do better. Um, but if you can break down the long form piece of content into bullet pointed lists of numbers, um, people's brains work in loops. They want to close the loop. So if you now repurpose the top two of seven things that X, Y, or Z, they're going to, if they watch the two, now their brain wants to close the loop. So they're going to want to go now to the full length piece of content and see what the rest of the five pieces are that they missed out on. So now we like, and when we do this with other clients and we're creating long form content on the front end, that's the only format we start in. We're like, take the one question that you get asked all the time and break it down into seven points that you can actually talk about. Um, and it's, that's basically the magic trick to being able to repurpose it. Cause now you've got seven pieces of content that you can pull out of one long form video and they're all 
very specific, you know, what seven they're going to be, you know, and then there's little strategies like headlines that perform, like there are certain the three words and headlines that outperform any other beginnings of headlines. And there's been really cool research done on that too. Um, I'll actually, I'll send you the, the link to that after this, because it's pretty cool to see what three words do well. And some of them like crazily outperform anything else. And we're talking like the big, bold headline at the top of like your repurpose yeah. video. So people kind of get an idea of what it's going to be about, but that's generally how we, how we do it. Numbers really work. God, that's so interesting. Okay. So there's all of like these little tidbits of things that you've sort of learned along the way through people like doing the trial and error of this. And you have like, you're that intentional about saying like, okay, we, we know the, the golden nugget of this piece of content. Like now we have to figure out how to give them literally like two sevenths of the story so that this can be enough for them to come and watch the, the entire piece of content. Right. Absolutely. And what's nice about when you bullet point things out and have seven points, if you will, um, when you go to start on each point, it's, it's automatically kind of a natural end point where you're not just like cutting somebody in the middle of a sentence or a thought, like you're going to be like step number two is, and that's just a really easy place to cut. And then right mm -hmm. before step number three, it's just, it's, it all feels very clean because it's basically like build your own piece of content is what it comes down to. You can break it apart. You can put it back together. So it's just a, a really strategic way to start making the long form pillar content. I'm curious now as well, for businesses that haven't made all of this content yet, they're not super experienced with repurposing everything that they have because they haven't even made that much stuff. But do you recommend businesses start somewhere in some medium of video before going and doing this repurposing? Or do you feel like businesses can do this the minute they start to create effective video? They can start the second they have content. I mean, realistically, if you're going to create it, then start breaking it up into a million pieces. Cause one piece, like we were saying before, one piece of content shouldn't just expire after it gets posted. Like it should still be relevant for a long time. So if you have, if you create your first piece of really well done long form content, you, let's say it's a one through seven or whatever, you've got seven weeks of repurposing power out of just that one piece of content to send people to that so that page or wherever it is that you're sending them, don't just send them to YouTube, send them to a landing page, please. But you know, like you, you should get mileage out of it if you're doing it right. So you don't always have to be constantly chasing the best new, like long form piece of content. But if, if you're, if I'm honest, bulk record all of that stuff, like make your list of videos that you want to record. And I'll actually like on my phone, as I'm thinking of things, like if I get off of a call with a client, and they have a question that I know I hear all the time, I'll just make a note. Hey, Siri, make a note of this thing that they asked me. And I'll make a whole video about that. And then we'll break that down. It's literally just the stuff you say over and over and over again that you feel like you've told everybody. You haven't told everybody. People clearly have that question <laughs> consistently, right? So make content out of that. And then, you know, that can be your long form. Turn that into a blog post too that's then has the video embedded. Like there's so many different ways you can take one random thought while you had driving and turn that into your blog, your long form video, like lead gen, and then seven plus social weeks of social media posts. If you're really, really strategic about it at the very beginning. Have you seen anybody that just drank from the fire hose for, and like just did a, a massive amount of content all at once so that like for a year they had everything they needed to do as like a small business owner or somebody that's just like, you know what, I know this is important, but it's not something I can give uh, like a, a 30 minutes a week to like, I need to just do this all at once. How do you think yeah. businesses do that the right way? Well, that's actually what I did originally with my video production company. Like I was like, I don't want to, first of all, it's expensive to do that. If you have like full production, because every getting together every week or whatever with a crew that, you, you know, if you're not super in, experienced in video production, then you need to bring somebody on. Right. So Time, time and money efficiency is going to be a big player there. And that's what I would do. I'd be like, we're going to spend the whole day and we are going to have a strategy session beforehand. We're going to talk about all the videos we're going to record. We're going to have all the bullet points laid out. We're going to know exactly what these are going to look like. We're probably going to get 12 videos out of the entire day. We're going to go and film and that's going to be the end of that. And so now they've got 12 long form pieces of content, which really didn't take that long. You can survive one day to get a whole year's worth of like social media posts, right? But then each of those, like we said, have, have a lifespan that you can juice them so much with repurposed assets. Like it, in a day of your personal time and strategically putting the right partners in place to edit, to do the repurposing, and then to be able to post them on your social media platforms, you've got your year's worth of social media content that's then driving to the long form that should already be really impactful to begin with. 
And then if you're really savvy, you have it embedded on your website. You've got a blog post written out of the seven things you talked about. So it's already formatted well for a blog too, because they do well with numbers also. And now that's driving SEO too, to your site. So literally in one day, you can just crank all of this kind of stuff out. We actually, because, um, you know, I segued from video production to repurpose house, which is, you know, taking existing content. I'm seeing how there's a need on both sides. And so now we're growing to start creating events where we can do this for clients, where we do a quarter of content and with six different companies over the uh, course of two days, like a weekend, right? Because it's just, it's so much easier for clients who are busy and just don't want to do it. It's, they know it's a priority, but not enough to like set up a camera every week. So it's like, you have to kind of meet, meet businesses where they're at because it's unrealistic to think that you're going to constantly be like remembering every Tuesday at 10 AM to bust out a camera and start talking to it eloquently. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. I have a, if I put makeup I have a, on once like a, a week, timer I'm lucky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. yeah, no, I have, I have like a calendar in my, just like remember to do something content related. <laughs> yeah. um, okay. So let's talk about any like composition of a video like this. Cool. If you have a, a talking head and like a smaller mid-sized business and you were going to go shoot 12 videos with them at a day, What's going to perform best when you're repurposing this stuff? Is it is it a talking head staring right at a camera? Is it interview style? Is it just long form, like a radio podcast discussion? Like, how would you go tackle that with each individual business? So video, for sure. I mean, audio can be repurposed into audio grants with the moving waveforms, and that basically turns it into video. But people like sure. to see faces. You know, they want to associate. Interviews are really, really cool for a couple of different reasons. A, the cross promotion on them are incredible. Like you post a piece of content and it's not just your audience seeing it because the likelihood of them sharing that piece of content with their audience who isn't your audience, it's you're doubling your exposure, if not more, depending on what their audience looks like, right? So interviews are really great. But the cool thing right now is that like, you don't have to go super crazy high quality on video for it to perform. Like I interviewed Dennis Yu not too long ago and we were talking about how he has a client, a nationwide client. They spent like five figures on this video and it was super heavily produced. They put that on social and then they did a selfie style video of the owner. He was like, nobody wants to see my face. He's like, just do it. Selfie style video, one minute cost $0. And that one outperformed the produced one like by a long, long, long shot. So it's like, hmm. you can get away with being at a conference and seeing somebody who is really cool, a person in your industry and just selfie style videoing on your phone and having a conversation and repurposing that. And that will do really well on social because people love like the selfie style video. It makes them feel like they're kind of getting into like your life. It's more personal. Um, but then there's also the blog style type stuff where you're actually offering tips and things like that. And that performs well as well. That's talking head, but you just have to make sure you're captioning everything because 85% of people scroll through social media on mute. Like nobody knows how to watch video anymore because they're not supposed to be watching video in the places where they are. So um, just making sure you format it right. Talking head, like what we're doing here, won't work on social media at all unless you have captions. And if you have captions, then you've nailed it. So it's like one tiny element makes the world of difference on if it's going to get engagement or not. And when it comes to engagement, do you guys have any best practices? Like here's, here's what I feel like some people are thinking is like, if I don't have a large social media following right now, then I don't really have anyone to push this out to anyway, unless I'm making something that like my employees or team members are going to be excited to publish on their own personal accounts. Like how do you make the most out of publishing this stuff? Uh, is it like hashtagging or what do you tell businesses to do to eat, like get the most juice from just an exposure standpoint? There's, there's so many different ways. There's lots of strategies and it really just depends. Like in, it depends on industry, I guess, because the platform is going to be unique. So like Instagram's obviously hashtagging and things like that. Um, having the employees and having friends or like colleagues who will share content with you you share their content, they share your content. I've seen calendars that other businesses have where it's like business one knows that on Tuesdays they share business three's content on Instagram. And then business three knows that on day five, they share, it's like, it's been pretty incredible to see, but it racks up engagement really, really quickly because you're not the same business. You're not offering the same service, but you're speaking to the same audience. So it really benefits everybody. So you can create friends in your industry and share each other's content strategically and get more eyeballs and build an audience that way. That's kind of what we're talking about with, you know, tagging when you're in interviews is they share and all of a sudden you've got a bigger audience. Um, 
really like the groups are going to be a great one. You just have to be careful with groups because you can't be self-promotional. They'll kick you out and they'll delete your content. So like if you are in groups that are, you know, in the same interests as you are, you just have to be contributing outside of just like me, me, me way more than you ever say me, me, me. They're going to be a little more forgiving. Like this group endless who we did the case study with, they are in all, like all of the event, like industry groups and they are super helpful and they are constantly commenting and helping people. So in those groups, it, it's, they're forgiven when they put up a really cool piece of content that has their logo on it because the content is also give content. They're still educating. Um, so like, don't go and spam a bunch of groups. That's ridiculous. But also you can still put that stuff if it's helpful. Um, so I mean, really like hitting all of the platforms too, because you can have different followers on different platforms. I know that like for a lot of people, Instagram doesn't get like an ROI if it's not product, you know, but it's brand mm-hmm. awareness. If they see your content there because you've hashtagged it properly, then, you know, they may be more interested when they see your stuff on LinkedIn or on Facebook. So, um, there's just the other thing to remember is that like I said before, you can't deposit likes. And I got that from a client. Like it doesn't matter if, if a billion people saw your piece of content, what matters is if the right people saw your content. So if the right people are seeing it, hopefully they're taking action and your content is, is awesome enough to get them to go and take the next step too. Use your channels, collaborate, which I think is the biggest one here. And speaking of that, Shana, as we wrap up here, you are actually speaking at DSMW this year. Is that right? I am. And I'm so excited. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so give us like just the, the tidbit. What are, what are you going to be speaking about and, and who is it really for? Yeah. So it's, it's basically for people who don't know how much content they have that they're sitting on that can be repurposed. It's three segments. So we're going to go over all the types of content that can be repurposed that you haven't really thought about. It's going to go over the best practices. We talked about a couple of them, but there's a handful of really like you have to do it processes that the pros are using that's getting them engagement. And then it's the implementation strategy. We do like a deep dive on this case study and exactly the things that you can do the second that you get your content um, to start getting the leverage and the mileage out of it. Stoked about that. I am (laughs) really excited to hear you talk. I'm excited to watch Repurpose House keep growing. And what we'll do is just at the bottom of this as well, we'll have the link to the agenda for DSMW 2020. If you guys haven't gotten your tickets yet, it's April 5th through the 7th in Hartford, Connecticut. So please go check it out. You can watch Shana. You can watch myself talk. A lot of experts in the digital sales and marketing world. And Shana, for people that are interested in just keeping up with you, what's the easiest way to stay in contact with you and get in touch? Yeah. So on social channels, I'm Shana Weisinger. There's not another one I I feel like. So basically my (laughs) at Shana Weisinger all over the place is going to be me. If you want to follow Repurpose House, that's going to be where you get a lot of that like value-driven content, the repurposed tidbits that then drive you to all the cool long form stuff. That's going to be Repurpose House Co on all the different platforms too. Okay. Awesome. So check out Shana on LinkedIn. We'll have also her link in the show notes below and come to DSMW this year. And thanks so much for watching, guys. If you have any questions about what we talked about here or how to get the most out of your own content that you've made already, please leave a comment below. We do read and respond to every single comment here on this YouTube channel. And give us a like, give us a share, show this to somebody that you think would get value out of it that may not know what Repurpose House is yet or Film School for Marketers. And as always, guys, until we see you next time, keep learning. Keep learning.